all right. So let's, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try, I'll just buzz through uh, this uh, presentation real quick and we'll, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I think the general principles in this presentation relative to supplementation will be important. Uh, as you think about using the calculator program or any uh, nutrition software program. Um, it, the one we're going to use is called Calculator. It is free and available uh, to you all. You can download it from the beef.okstate.edu website. Okay, and uh, tell you what, let me share my screen and let's just start off with this. Uh, this is kind of a the four bullet items I want you to keep in mind, these will, this will really simplify uh, supplementation questions. I know it's difficult to make these decisions because, you know, just like most uh, fields are relatively mature in terms of marketing uh, and products available, there's lots and lots of options in beef cattle nutrition. Uh, first of all, determine the nutrient requirements of the specific animal that you're concerned about. And of course, they vary a lot based on the, you know, the class of cattle, uh, whether we're talking about pregnant cows, lactating cows, uh, weaned 500 pound growing calves, mature bulls, so on and so forth. They vary a lot. Uh, the uh, tables in your beef cattle manual provide guidelines for these nutrient requirements. And so that's one important resource. Uh, the requirements are built in to this calculator program that we're gonna to use tonight. So that's another resource that you can help solve uh, that uh, first bullet item there. Determine the nutrient requirements as close as you can get them to the animal that you're concerned about evaluating their nutritional program. Secondly, estimate the nutrients that are available from the forage that's why you had your hay tested, um, and that's exactly what you're doing there. You know, we can use tabular values from what is it? I don't remember what chapter it is, 16 or something with the nutritive values uh, of, the, of the feedstuffs. We can use those tabular values, but what that represents, a number for, let's say, Bermuda grass hay represents an average across a whole bunch of people's hay samples, right? What you'd rather have is your own that's specific to your operation. Now, it gets more challenging when you're talking about nutritive value of grazed forage because it's hard to, you know, predict uh, what that cow is going to consume and it's going to be changing over time. You hope the core of your hay bales, you know, if it's not terribly wet is fairly constant. Uh, the quality of that hay is going to be constant, especially if it's stored inside. It is going to be constant, but if it's standing out in the in the field, the pasture, it's going to be going up or going down. So that's a, a little more challenging. Uh, nevertheless, there are some guidelines in calculator and some guidelines in those uh, tables in the beef cattle manual to help you sort of get a, a good idea of where to start relative to uh, your own forage quality. Um, okay, then item number three, determine supplemental needs. Okay, so all we're going to do is simple math. We're going to uh, estimate the nutrients that are available in the forage base. We also have to predict about how much that cow will consume, all right? And if you take the, let's say, percent protein times the pounds that she consumes in a day, you have the pounds of crude protein that she has consumed. Once we get to that number, it's simply compare it to the nutrient requirements of that animal and see if you have an excess uh, or a gap, okay? You're either gonna have too much, just about right, or too little. And that's what we're looking for. We'd like to know if we're overdoing protein, for example. Um, software like this can be used to figure out if you know, let's say your mineral supplementation program is really high in zinc uh, and your uh, commercial feed product is really high in zinc. You might have uh, excessive amount of zinc in your cow's diet and you'd like to know that. So it's the same principle. Uh, and then finally, you know, the last thing we'll do, once we determine if there's a supplemental need or not, including energy, I haven't mentioned that, we, I said protein as the example, but 
you know, if, if the calculator program estimates that a cow is losing weight, obviously she has inadequate amount of daily energy, right? And that's how calculator helps you make that decision is it uses weight gain or weight loss uh, to help you determine. And you're, you're the one that has, has to make the decision, you know, is let's just say if a cow's really fleshy, maybe a quarter of a pound a day weight loss or half a pound a day of weight loss is acceptable. Okay, and, you, and, that's, and that's just fine. On the other hand, if a cow's thin, body condition score four, uh, and she's coming up on Kevin, maybe she needs to gain half a pound to a pound a day. And so your nutritional program will have to be adjusted to make that happen. Okay, finally, evaluate supplement alternatives. Uh, you know, this is where a lot of people call our office. This is where they wanna start. Should I buy 20% cubes or 38% cubes? Should I use a 28% liquid feed product with urea? Uh, should I buy distillers dry grains or, or wheat mids because they seem to be a lot less expensive? Can I use cheap corn every now and then? Uh, so these are really all after uh, the fact questions and they can be honestly they can those questions can be answered uh, with some confidence once you've done uh, taken care of the first three questions or bullet items there and and that's those are the things we need to do to start off with and then the last thing we'll get to is say okay here's exactly how much protein we need this is this is what we estimate the amount of energy need or the oversupply uh, and so consequently, based on that, now let's evaluate the alternatives and see if, you know, uh, at, at some point when you're evaluating alternatives, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become more about either the cost of those alternatives or perhaps the convenience factor. Um, if you can feed three times a week or put it out once a week, like a self-fed product or something like that, you know, that's going to weigh in. And it's not going to always be about the nutritional balance uh, for the cattle. Uh, but you can make those decisions. Okay, so another principle is that body condition is going to be the key in a cow calf operation in terms of making these nutritional management decisions. We use body condition, you know, as a proxy really for weight gain and weight loss. Since you don't get to uh, get weigh your cows every day it's probably a little bit difficult to tell whether they're gaining weight or losing weight. I mean, obviously uh, someone with quite a bit of experience is gonna see that, notice it, uh, if, they're losing, if they're losing weight, for example. Uh, but a good way to determine energy stores in a cow is their body condition. Okay, so in general, we're gonna, we're gonna reduce an hour presentation of this one slide, and that is in general, we're gonna aim for average body condition in a mature cow when she calves, and that's body condition score five. She's not fleshy, she's not fat, and she's not thin. You know, she's in that just right, you know, where you might be able to see the last rib or two. Uh, and uh, Brad and Justin will fine tune on that a lot here in a couple of weeks, but two-year-olds, um, since two-year-olds are harder to get bred back, they have a longer postpartum interval than mature cows. And thin, when they calve in thin condition, it's really hard on them in terms of that postpartum interval. So we're gonna hedge our bet and aim for a body condition score six in that two-year-old uh, to give her the best chance possible to breed back uh, and, and come in and stay with the herd the following year. Okay, so that's what we're going to, that's basically what we're going to cover here with the calculator program. You know, when it gets down to uh, uh, d doing the math, you know, another thing that I always encourage people when we go through this material is that you need to use your common sense and your, let's say, your, uh, your skills uh, to monitor those cattle, watch and see and observe what's going on. You know, as the manure, uh, piles getting really dry and tall if they are you know they're piling up that might be telling you that you have a protein deficiency it could also mean that the cow's uh, water source is either really uh, poor quality or and they're not willing to drink it or maybe it's even dried up um, 
so you know don't don't forget to use your common common sense when it comes to these kind of things the the book can help us the book or the computer program can help us a lot but uh, uh, th those observations can help us adjust to specific conditions okay let's see I think that's really yeah we've already gone through that so I'm going to drop this and we'll take a minute to go th go through the uh, software program and then hopefully uh, some of you will be willing to help me evaluate your own situation anyway so um, this is the front page of the calculator program it's basically this is a glorified excel spreadsheet okay um, now you can move around in calculator uh, Two different ways there's going to be these these big uh, buttons that you can click on to move from one worksheet to the next or you can go down here at the bottom so uh, these buttons at the bottom will basically do the same thing so the first page is the cattle this is where we're gonna we're gonna try to get as close to that bullet item number one as we can this is where we're going to describe the animal and that will help it describe or calculate the animal's nutrient required all right the feed list is where we're going to fine tune the feeds available and the particularly the base forage source and that's where we're going to try to resolve bullet item number two uh, the nutrients available in the in the forage and the feeds that we're going to provide bullet item number three where we're doing the math is the balancer page right here so that's where uh, one's going to be the requirements and the uh, nutrients available are going to be compared to one another and it will show you right away if there is a gap or an excess okay and so we're just basically going to speed up the math with this uh, software program and then when you get all finished uh, you can jump to the summary page and print it out if you choose so you can you can save your results. So let's start off with the cattle page here. And we'll just start off and, uh, and go through, I'll just give you a quick example, and then we'll, we'll pull in somebody else's feed, modify, try to plug in the data on their cows. Okay, so first thing here, you can fill in this top if you want to uh, describe your cattle. These are all uh, user, uh, cells if you will and you can put whatever information you choose in there uh, most of this some of this will be printed out on that summary page once we get to that point first thing you want to do is select the class of cattle so this is a drop down box you just go over here most of the time you get around uh, if you can't get beyond the window that's viewable make sure you push the slide rule over here up and down so that you can see all of the options available. But you can see we go from growing and finishing cattle all the way through the different classes of heifers and cows, all the way down to mature bulls. So you need to select the class of animal that best describes the cattle you're interested in working with. So for our example today, let's just start out and assume somebody's going to calve in March. And so they're in the first part of the third trimester so late gestation in our, our example now here just type in the length or number of days that you're considering for this feeding period you know it might be 100 days it might be 30 days it could be 60 or 90 days um, we kind of encourage people to try to stay within this stage of production so you know you wouldn't want to put in 120 or 150 days here because you'd be overlapping from late gestation into almost the middle of lactation. And so you wouldn't get very accurate results. I've got 60 days in there right now. Okay, so number of cattle, that really doesn't influence too much. I'm not gonna worry about that. I've got these cows typed in here at, you know, you can put a thousand pound cows if that's what they're weighing out there right now. I'm gonna put them in at 1200 pounds and I'm gonna say my average mature weight I think is somewhere around that 1200. So this this represents the mature cows, not the first calf heifers. Uh, and today I think they're about a body condition score five, uh, and their mature weights, you know, about 1200. So I'm not trying to create a whole bunch of change. 
Um, then you just type in the expected calf birth weight. Uh, the time period where that number is really important is this third trimester because that's when 70 to 80 percent of that calf growth takes place is late in gestation. So I've got 80 pounds in there. Um, now, if we're talking about lactating cows, we'd be really concerned about this number here. How much milk do your cows give? And so if you, if you select the drop down box here, uh, they're pretty straightforward options low, medium, low, average, medium, high, or high. Now, most people uh, don't get to milk their cows, so don't have a real good idea. If you just don't have any idea, uh, I just recommend you just pick average. Okay, now I've got 100% Angus cows in here right now. Notice that it gives me an answer that the peak lactation or peak milk production per day, on average, we think in Angus cows is about 24 pounds. Okay, uh, if I if I have let's say I've selected two or three generations of Angus bulls with really high milk EPDs, uh, you, might, you might go ahead and pick high, okay? And that's gonna jump their peak milk production to 29 pounds. On the other hand, if you purposefully selected uh, sires with low milk EPDs, uh, you, could, you could select low and that pulls you down to 19 pounds per day. So that's what that's all about. Um, and I would just use kind of the history of your bull, bulls that you've purchased in terms of their EPDs. You know, maybe you've got that uh, registration certificate you could go back and look at uh, if you know uh, what, you know, what uh, those, if you've got information on those sires that uh, maybe your younger cows are out of or whatever. Or if, you know, if you just haven't paid any attention um, and you, you just kind of think your cows are representative of the industry, just pick average and roll on. Okay, this one's really important here to uh, mention that it's a 60 day period. Initial body condition score is intended to be the body condition score of the first day of this 60 day period. So if they're thin today and I'm working on this 60 day period, I'm gonna put a four in there. Uh, you know, if they're really thin, you'd put a three. If they're fleshy, let's say you're starting in on this uh, evaluation, uh, the first day of August on fall cabin cows. Well, usually that time of year, a fall cabin cow ought to be in pretty good shape. So maybe she's a seven and uh, through that lactation, early lactation, we're going to will, be willing to let her drop off to a body condition score six. But the condition score in the second box here is intended to be this target score at the end of this feeding period. All right. So to keep it simple to start off we're here with, well, I'm just gonna put them uh, both at five and that just says we're not trying to reduce body energy stores or body fat composition. We're not trying to increase it. We're just kind of trying to hold that cow where she's at in terms of body composition. In this case, we're just trying to get her to calve in a body condition score of five. Here's your guidelines for body condition scores. You can click on this button and it jumps you over here to a little worksheet that just kind of gives you some examples and talks through the descriptions. Okay, uh, so that's just there uh, if you need it as a resource. All right, now uh, I mentioned I mentioned the uh, breeds over here, which, and you can, you can put basically any combination of numbers you choose in here. I'll tell you what's kind of fun. Let's, let's uh, we've got Angus cows in there. It says average Angus cows 24. Uh, how about somebody give me another breed that you'd be curious about their milk production? I'm gonna start off with Holstein because I know they're gonna be different. Somebody give me a, another one, Holstein. We, we, we had a short horn, Dave. Short horn. Okay, there's 100% Holstein, 95. You buy that? <laughs> That's a lot of milk. Short horn. 100% short horn. What do you think, higher or lower? Lower. According to the National Research Council, on average, uh, maybe a little bit surprising because they started off as a dual. What about, what about Simmental? Yeah, 
they also were came into the country as a dual purpose breed, right? Yeah, a little bit higher, 26. Let's go to high and see what a Simmental does on high. 32, remember Angus went to 29. So pretty substantial difference in nutrient requirements uh, depending on the breed. This, this over here also influences uh, the maintenance energy requirements to cows, but we don't, need, we don't need to get into that. It does adjust their nutrient requirements based on what some of the literature says their maintenance requirements are. Um, okay, now, we should be able to uh, do a good job now estimating these animals nutrient requirements so now let's go to the feed list and work on bullet item number two we're going to start off well, let's just assume we're just going to feed hay i know that's probably not a very common uh, situation but let's just say these cows are basically going to be in a small sacrifice pasture and you're just feeding hay and supplement for the rest of the winter until they calve. so uh the feed list is set up here it's got four or five different sections. Right here, um, up at the top, you can see kind of the description of the columns. Uh, here, uh, uh, we've got the name of the feed, the units that you want them described in, and remember, anything that's white here, you can modify. You can't change these energy values right over here. ME, NEM, and NEG, these are locked. All you do is put in the TDN of the feed stuff and it modifies these energy values, calculates them for you. Uh, so if you get a feed test back and it gives you an NEM value, for example, I'd recommend, and it, and it doesn't give you a TDN, I just manipulate the TDN value until you get the NEM that your uh, report indicates. Okay, so dry matter, protein, RDP is rumen degradable protein. You don't need to worry about that. Most forages, we're gonna set at about 70 to 75% rumen degradable protein. But this is the protein column that you would put, that you get back from your uh, feed test, all right? Uh, TDN or total digestible nutrients, that number is gonna be reflected on your feed test and that's what you would type in there. Uh, I'm going to go down here to harvested forages for hay, and I went in just a little bit ago, and I typed in Tom Brill's hay. I got it at $70. What's hay worth down there now? Uh, probably from $80 to $90 a ton. Wow. Okay. We'll change it to $80. Okay, I've got it in 11% uh, moisture, 89% dry matter. Uh, notice your feed report is going to say we're just going to assume that all this uh, stuff is about 11% moisture. Uh, that's a tough one. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference unless it's really wet. And then it, then it matters a little more if you're dealing with silage, then it matters a lot more. Um, but the uh, as received number that you'll get back on most feed tests it's not terribly indicative. You know, you're probably going to want it to be 90% plus dry matter. Uh, I would just, I would just kind of follow their lead and put in around 88 to 89% on most forages. Now, remember, you can do this at home. You can figure out what your true dry matter is on your own forage. Maybe that's another presentation. Justin can tell you how to go about doing that with your microwave. Anyway, uh, here I put in uh, Tommy's at seven. 0.1% protein, okay, I just put it at 70% RDP, that's not going to matter, and then TDN 55.3, uh, Mike Aders, I've got it, uh, I had it at $70, I'm going to move him up to 80, dry matter 89%, 11.7 protein, so higher in protein, um, and then 58.7, that's, that's some nice hay. Uh, Mike at 58.7, almost 59% TDN. All right. Now notice uh, all of my uh, columns over to the right are going to be empty. Uh, if I had uh, gone to the trouble and expense to get these analyzed for uh, minerals, which you can do through our forage testing lab and other commercial labs, you plug in those numbers and you can do a really nice job evaluating your mineral supplementation program. Today we're going to stick with energy and protein. Okay, so that's the feed list. Everything from, from this dry matter column, everything to the right needs to be entered on a dry matter basis, okay? So on your, on your feed report, 
that's the first column says dry basis so that's the number those are the numbers that you would want to enter is the dry basis okay we got two of them done now let's go to number three item number three was basically compare one to the other right and that's the balancer page i'm going to blow this up a little bit so it's easier to see this is also set up in a drop down box configuration i had a, a really uh, productive graduate student Megan Gross uh, helped me uh, uh, modernize calculator this last time and she fixed it up this way and I, I really like it and we've had some good feedback where people like it uh, other uh, folks have liked it this way but anyway feed category you just click on that drop down and you select the category you're interested in whether it's uh, grazed forage harvested forage concentrate feed of some type a commercial feed product or some sort of a mineral and or vitamin product. These are general categories. You can put anything in any of these uh, categories over there on that feed list that you want. You can organize it however you like. It's your feed list. Once you save this file, uh, that information is going to be saved. You can put your mineral up there and graze forages if you want to. It won't matter how it, how it is calculated. This is just to help you kind of stay organized a little bit and find those find them better uh, so harvested forages i'm just going to uh, click that it fills in the box and then i'm going to go look for a specific harvested forage and so i'm going to take the slide over here go clear down to the bottom and all these harvested forages book values that are entered and we should be able to find mike and tommy and there they are so we'll pull tommy's hay in and I tell the way I like to uh, suggest that you start off is just put is just put start off with a number in here. It doesn't really matter what you enter. There's no wrong answer. So I, if I'm dealing with cows, I'll just start off with 25 pounds. Okay, and then you have to the way this is set up, you have to go down here into this feed intake pounds as fed, and you have to enter the feed intake down there too. I know you have to do it twice. Uh, it's a little bit of a hassle, but there's reason to do that. And that is if, if people want to set this up on a percent basis, you could put 100% hay, 100% hay, and feed 25 pounds of it. You see how that works? So if we had four feeds and I was going to feed 25% of each, and then I just put in the pounds I'm going to feed down here at the bottom, it works great. So this allows you to do it either way. You could put it in on pounds per head per day or a percentage basis and it works the same. Okay, so we've got 25 pounds. Now let's go balance and see where we're at. So remember we've got cows in late gestation. I'm gonna slide down here to these guidelines. First of all, uh, the first thing I would look at is this feed intake ratio. So you see if you're getting relatively close to what it thinks these cows ought to consume. Okay, so it's saying your ratio is about 1.0. And that's really what we're aiming for. If that ratio said 0.8, well, let's just make it do that. Let's say 20 pounds. It's saying, oh man, you're under feeding this cow. She would eat 20% more than what you're providing. If we say 30 pounds, it's gonna say, yeah, that's wishful thinking. It's 20% over what we think this cow can actually consume based on the forage quality that you said you're providing. Let's go back to 25. I'd consider that to be balanced, okay? That's about what we think these cows will consume. Now, next thing to look at is the protein ratio right here. It's red. That's a no-no, right? That's a red flag. And so what's that telling you? Well, it's telling you that they're shy or a little short. You have a gap in protein. So if this is the hay you're gonna feed, yes, you need a little bit of a protein supplement. Okay, uh, then once we'll fix that here in just a minute, but from there, then decision number three is to see if you're satisfied with the weight change. And over here on the left, it says projected average daily gains right at a pound a day, desired average daily gains 1.18. Somebody tell me where this desired average daily gain come from. We said, we said we're, we had them in a body condition score five, we want them to wind up in a body condition score five. Where's this weight gain coming from? The guys here are saying fetal growth. 
Yeah, exactly. You can see it down here at the bottom. So um, fetal tissue average death of gain is, and, and that's basically saying that the cow is not gaining any weight, right? Projected average death of gain is 0.98. We're actually cheating uh, the cow because the fetus is going to grow, uh, but she is actually losing weight, minus 0.2. Everybody see that? Does that make sense? So, yep, she's, if you were to weigh her on a scale, she'd be gaining weight, but she's actually probably losing some condition. In fact, that's what this box says. It says days to lose one condition score. Now, 410 days is a long time, but it just tells you that it's a real minor rate of weight loss. Uh, so, you know, you'd have to make a decision at that point as to whether that was acceptable or not. Okay, so let's fix that protein uh, deficiency. I'm just going to go in here for this example. I'm going to go commercial feeds. I'm going to use a 20% range cube since that is the world renowned Oklahoma most popular feed, it seems like. And what do you think? We'll just uh, let's start off with about two pounds of 20s. See how that does us. Now remember, my feed intake now is up to 27, so I got to change this. To match it, 27 up, it says you're 6% over. Don't think they'll eat quite that much. So let's drop, you just kind of have to go back and forth, uh, kind of what if, and let's, let's drop that by the hay intake, since that's the voluntary feed intake. That's what she gets to choose how much she wants to eat. She certainly, most cows would, or herds of cows would certainly eat all the cubes. Uh, so let's change that then. Uh, to 26. I dropped the hay one pound. Now we're at 1.02. I'm going to say that's close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, projected average day of the gain now is 1.26. My protein ratio is 1.04. So I've met the protein requirement. We are, the cattle are getting about what it thinks they should eat in a day because our, our feed intake ratio is close to one. Uh, it says they should be gaining about a pound and a quarter. Um, you, you know, we said the fetus needs 1.2 down here. It says she's actually slightly gaining weight, just barely gaining a little body condition. And she's not going to do much in terms of body condition change in that 60 day feeding period. Our costs are $1.29 a day. Uh, it's what the cubes and the hay adds up to. All right, so there's a real uh, quick introduction to calculator. That's how it works. And it, it pretty much works the same way for growing cattle, bred heifers, lactating cows, and so on. Uh, I'd encourage you to just take either this tool or something similar to it. And you can, you know, you can sit around on a real cold winter day or a rainy day and, and probably uh, get pretty familiar with it and maybe save yourself some money. Let me do one other thing, just as an example, then, uh, Justin, and then I'll see what questions you all have and what you what you'd like to do. Uh, but we used, uh, let's see, we used Tommy's hay there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pull in Mike Mike's hay. All right. Now remember, it was a little higher quality hay. Uh, so let's just put 24 pounds of Mike's hay in there. And with higher energy and higher protein and just see what happens. We've got the same two pounds of cubes. So I haven't changed anything except the hay source. Well, my cost didn't go up because I got his hay price the same, right? $1.29. Look what happened to uh, number one, the feed intake ratio. It says, you know what? They actually might eat a little bit more than that. Now we're not far off. In fact, it's probably not worth uh, changing at 0.98. But the higher the quality hay, the more the cows are going to be able to consume. And that's what the program should reflect. Uh, projected average day of the gain, 1.5 now. Remember, it was uh, what, right around one and a quarter. Uh, so now it's saying the rate of condition gain is, is a little bit better, right? Because we have better quality hay. 0.3 now, the fetus is still gaining 1.18 pounds a day, cows gaining 0.33. Uh, boy, look what we're doing here, though. Way overshooting on protein, right? So we could save 
some money here. We've got more energy than we need because we've got more weight gain. We've got more protein. Well, let's just drop the 20s. How about uh, this? Hay would suggest that they really don't need uh, a, a supplemental protein and or energy source. Okay, so looks like I'm going to need to probably about 26 pounds. So I'm going to change those both to match at 26 pounds. It says there's a pound a day. They're still gaining 1.4 and I'm still way over on protein. Well, guess what? If you have, now this might not be very practical, but if you could limit their intake to about by rolling the hay out or turning them into a dry lot, letting them eat the hay for a while and pushing them back out and just kind of get close to an average, you might be able to restrict their intake on this real nice quality hay. Let's, uh, you know, that, and that may not, I understand that probably is not going to be real practical for a lot of people, but what I want to show you is what Mike's hay is actually worth. Okay, let's take, let's take a quick look. So if we back off on the feed intake of this hay until we get down to that, about that same performance, which would be about, I think we're about there, right? On our, on our first uh, example, wasn't it about 1.18 or something like that? One point two we still have way more protein than we need now this says we're only spending 96 cents a day we were spending a dollar 29 well that's because we got the two hays priced the same everybody if you had this information hopefully you'd you'd go try to buy mike's hay for 80 dollars. but mike what what's it really worth uh, so using this example and this scenario all we have to do is go back in here and bump his hay price Let's put it to a hundred dollars a ton. Go back to the balancer. We haven't changed anything but the hay price. Now we're spending a dollar twenty a day. Guess what? It's worth more than a hundred dollars a ton. Well, let's bump it to a hundred and ten dollars a ton. Back to the balancer. Ah, uh, now we're getting there. A dollar thirty-two. So we're just slightly over. It was a dollar twenty-nine. So we're pretty close to a break-even. And in other words, you can use something like this to figure out what you ought to be paying for another, another hay of another quality, uh, just a simple comparison like that. And so uh, that better quality hay in this case is worth in this situation on these cows under these conditions and the prices that we started off with here on the cubes uh, and uh, Tommy's hay. Mike's hay is worth just a little bit under $110 a ton, maybe 107 or eight. That is beef cow supplementation 101. Uh, what, what questions or is there something you'd like to try? I've used Mike and Tommy's hay. There's some really, it looked like maybe there must've been one hay sample that was alfalfa. Uh, we could, you know, compare that alfalfa to feeding the 20% cubes and see which one comes out on top from a cost per day or whatever. But uh, questions, uh, comments, or things you'd like to try. Doesn't take but a few seconds and there's, there's no wrong answers. Uh, hey, Justin, you can do mine if you want because I'm not sure what kind of quality I'm getting. That's Brant, by the way. Middle one for Brant is 7.8 and 55 TDM. What's it worth, Brant? Well, I was trying to run my calculator. I was giving forty-five dollars a bale, and they're weighing about uh, sixteen to seventeen hundred pounds, I think. That's cheap hay. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, I'm getting fifty-six dollars a ton. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, uh, what what's the numbers again? We're going to say eighty-nine percent dry matter, unless you got some other reason, Brant, to change it. Uh, what's the protein in TDM, Justin? Uh, it looks like it is running 55. Okay, protein? Uh, seven, eight. Okay. And it's brain? About, it's 90, 91% dry matter. Brant, what, uh, what kind of cows are we talking about or cattle? Uh, primarily black cows. Um, I've got some Herefords and Charlays, but primarily black. Okay. Tell you what we can do. We'll just make you up a mongrel herd. How about that? We'll go 10 and Hereford 10. Long as it adds to 100 at the bottom, you're good. 
All right. Now, what uh, what what are you thinking on weights, Brent? You got a, kind of a feel for about what they'll weigh. Uh, I'm gonna guess average is probably uh, I would say 1,200 maybe. Okay. Fair enough. 80 okay on birth weight. Uh, actually, my birth weights are a little lower than that. 75. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably 70, 70. Uh, maybe, maybe you said 70 to 75. Uh, and then milk. You think an average, or what do you think on milk? I'm gonna say average because I really don't know. Yeah. All right, fair enough. What what kind of condition are they in? I'm going to say all of them are close to five to six. Okay. Let's say they're five and a half. Okay, let's just pull that down to 26. And 26. So notice we're feeding this. You know, it said that uh, the higher quality hay, that those cows that eat more, I think it was a 0.98 or something at 26 pounds. Now it's 1.08, so it's lower quality. They're not going to be able to eat as much, so we need to we need to back off on that. So we'll get we'll get down to close to one, a little bit more. All right, close enough to one. A little bit short on protein, but not far off. You know, it was what was it seven seven or seven five. Uh, and we're, we are, looks like we are needing some energy. So we need some energy and protein. Brent, what do you want to use for supplement? What, what are you planning on using? Uh, I use a 20% cube. Okay. What, uh, do you have a price on it? You want to stick in there? I think we are at 290 a ton over here. Okay. 20%, 290. Well, that's going to be a better price than what I had in there. Oh, there it is. I guess got it in there. Uh, I'm just going to shoot in the dark here. We'll start off with three pounds. That may not be quite enough. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to reduce the forage intake, and then I'll have to go down here and change this. Okay, so I overshot it maybe just a hair. So I'll say 22.5. Okay, that's close enough to one. Weight gain is, is pretty good. I mean, it's just a little bit over the desired. So the cow is slightly gaining weight, hardly, hardly any at all. And actually we overshot, we overshot the protein by quite a bit. We're right where we need to be on, uh, on the weight gain though. So I would, I would be hesitant to pull any more of that supplement out of there. Um, otherwise you wouldn't have enough energy. So here in this case, you're at a dollar seven. So that's, I mean, even though it's lower quality hay, in this case, you know, the price makes up, makes up for the uh, lower quality. Hey Dave. Yeah. Can, can we look at a early lactation scenario with the same? Yep, same hay. Parameters. All right, so just go back to the cattle page. We'll go up here. We'll We'll change to early lactation mature cow. Early lactation mature cow, right there. Click on that. Won't change anything else. So what's going to happen to her weight gain? Now she's producing milk, which is more expensive even than producing a heavy calf. All right. So her weight gain, if we don't change the amount of hay she's getting, the amount of supplement she's getting, she should start to lose weight really fast. Right. Uh, so let's go over to the balancer page and see what happens. And sure enough. If we don't, of course, you know, she's going to eat more uh, because she's lactating and that's what that's telling you. Uh, but if we don't change anything, uh, she's losing 1.7 pounds a day. And in less than that 60 days, she's going to go from a body condition score five and a half to a body condition score four and a half. So she's losing weight and condition rapidly in this scenario. 
So let's just increase. So we're way short on protein now. <laughs> we're gonna have to increase everything. So uh, let's jump the cubes. I'm just gonna guess here and then we'll fine tune. I'm gonna jump the cubes to five pounds. I'm gonna jump the hay 24 pounds. That's a total of 29. Still not enough. We're still way short on protein. So let's jump them to seven pounds cubes. That gets us to 31 total. She'll still eat more than that. Uh, we're still underwater on the protein. Um, let's uh, let's just bump the hay one more notch and see if that gets us there. Getting close. Eight pounds. This is where a little better quality hay come in real handy, right? <laughs> we're having to feed the heck out of the out of the supplement to get there. Okay, so now we've now we've pretty well met her dry matter intake requirement, met her protein requirement. She is uh, still losing uh, substantial weight. Yeah, no, I don't know. Third of a pound may not be may not be too bad. Um, anyway, obviously uh, that supplementation requirement can get pretty dramatic if you if you're starting off with low quality hay and just trying to make up the difference with the supplement source and then the other question that i had was <clears throat> i guess when you're trying to figure this out and i don't know why i do it or why i ever started doing it but you know during the winter i'll do hay one day and cubes the next day so i just i alternate back and forth they never get unless it's a real bad snowy icy cold day um do i ever feed cubes and hay on the same days is that a is that a bad habit or is that okay or? No, I think it's fine. And are you just kind of putting out the amount of hay that they'll clean up in that two day period? Well, generally I, I go out and I'll unroll one of these big bales to them. I, I think this, I think the one that we're using is one that I'm trying to get rid of. Um, I think the higher one is probably the one I bought most of that I haven't really started feeding yet. Um, but I'll go unroll. I'll go unroll a bell um, one day and then I'll go feed. I, I usually feed about five to six pounds a head on each of the pastures. So um, plus I put protein tubs out and supplements and all that stuff. But I just, I don't know if I'm giving them enough. I really haven't seen any of them. I've got one or two older cows that look like they might be losing weight. Everybody else seems to look like they're doing okay. I just don't want to be starving them. Right. No, I mean, you know, so this is pretty extreme amount of supplement, but, uh, um, you know, in your, in your dry cow scenario, let's just go back and change it back. Late gestation dry cow. So there, what were we, I don't remember what we at three pounds. Um, so. Yeah, I think we're at three pounds of cubes, and I think we're at 24, maybe, of the forage. Okay. Yeah, that's right, right there is pretty close on our dry matter intake. They're gaining about what we need for them to. The cow's certainly not doing much there, and, and we are overfeeding protein just a tick. But, you know, again, I wouldn't, if you were restricted to only 20s, uh, I wouldn't reduce the amount because they're going to, you know, they'd be a little bit on the negative side of the weight change. But anyway, here, you know, with that, you know, we, there's quite a bit of research that says if you want to feed this daily equivalent three times a week of a supplement, it works well. Uh, the cattle perform about the same as if you were to feed them every day. And so, you know, what you'd be doing is three times seven days a week is 21 pounds divided by three feedings is what, seven. So you'd be dumping out seven pounds every time you went out there if you go on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, for example. And, and I think those tables of that, we call it interval feeding, those tables of performance comparing interval feeding are there in your beef cattle manual in this chapter 21. So. It works. It works good. I, way you're doing it, Brant. I I don't have any improvements, suggestions. I, Justin, 
Bradley. You know, might you might be you know if you're making them clean the hay up, you maybe you're restricting their hay intake a little bit. But as long as the cows are holding their condition, that's the main thing. All right, well, I think that's all. That's all I've got. Is there any other questions, or do you want to try anything else? Uh, Justin, I might let me pull in. Let me pull in one uh, hay source. And and a mineral, and just let you see how that works. Uh, a lot of you may may be way ahead of me, but <clears throat> that's okay. Um, let's see here, and I'll pull in a go down here to. I think we've got it under minerals and vitamins. We just got our mineral, but you'd want to take your feed tag and enter your own mineral. Uh, this is our mineral here. And if the cattle eat, oh, we're satisfied if they eat around two to two and a half ounces a day. So I'm going to put in 0.15 pounds a day. Uh, everybody's names over here on top of my my table. But this table over on the right, I'm probably driving you nuts. Okay, the table over on the right has got all of the details of the balance the nutrient balance. And so here you can see that yeah, says we're a little bit deficient in protein. Yeah, deficient in protein. I better go get a couple pounds of 20s. Make that up. Okay. All right. So notice if they, if I don't feed any mineral uh, in particular over here, I'm going to be short of sodium. So that's why cattle like to eat salt. Notice they need 7.5 grams a day. They're only getting 6.5. So honestly, they're not too far off. They are a little bit deficient in sodium and that's why you'd want them to be getting some salt. In this case, those are a little bit deficient in sulfur. Uh, they're substantially su deficient in copper. They need 107 milligrams. They're only getting 75, okay? Uh, zinc 320 so they're not too far off on zinc so we just need a little bit of that but around a tenth to 15 hundredths uh, pretty gets pretty close to fixing all those with that particular mineral and now it looks like in this scenario we could actually back off when next time we order mineral you, you just can't reduce the iron enough we always have way too much iron in all of our forage and mostly our supplements and our minerals uh, but manganese is, we're kind of overdoing the manganese here at 1122. We only need 427. We're overdoing the selenium. We're overdoing the zinc. So we could really uh, go buy a cheaper mineral and actually fit this scenario a little better. But you can see, you know, my only point is that uh, if you can get all those details entered, save it as your own uh, customized program. You can go back and fine tune on this over the years and really hone in on what your cattle need. And you don't have to be sub subject to the confusion uh, of, you know, somebody tells you, let's say, an injectable trace mineral, and you've got all these excessives on zinc, copper, and selenium. Why would you go buy uh, a, an injectable trace mineral when you're already there or, or feeding way too much of that? So anyway, uh, just another example that uh, may, maybe you can maybe you can benefit from. Hey, thanks everybody. Uh, enjoyed being with you. And and uh, if you have questions or troubles, give Justin and Bradley a call. And uh, they I'm a phone call away from from them as well. I'm glad to help. Lawman, thank you for being with us tonight. Appreciate you as always. Thanks everyone.